no competition just doesn't exist no well, even though it's, it's free then in in uh, europe you know people have been flying over from us and from canada and as they know, do and continents flying in just like well i need to do this training okay let's talk about the last training maybe because that was uh, is the freshest uh, experience that we have um How many trainings have you actually done? How many de armorings uh, training? Yeah, this is a good done? question. We started in uh, 2016 in October was the first training. And then it was pretty much two a year until now. So there will be like 14, 13, 14, something like that trainings. Yeah. And I can see a definite uh, as we as team are progressing and getting better at will be better at being me and, and Sana and also you but also our synergy and working together. It's getting more and more kind of into like, uh, the concussion is getting all the ingredients that it needs to have to be super good. So I can yeah. see the progression there, big one. Yeah, I mean, this is interesting. So I've, I've been observing the development of the training in the last uh, two years. So I've done, I think it's my fifth training that I co-facilitated uh, with you guys. Uh, after Corona. So the first one was planned in 2020. That didn't happen. So you were already uh, six years on the go with everything. Mm. But how did you start it? What, what was your way in? And uh, so, so how how did you build that up? I mean, the whole thing started really when there was really no training in the armoring anywhere. And But what was happening is from all these Tantra schools, that the armoring started getting a name and people started doing the armoring kind of en masse. And then we started getting feedback from customers, just like people that we would meet at Tantra festivals, at all sorts of workshops, friends, you know, because we were all kind of in the scene. And uh, a lot of feedback started coming back super negative. The people being almost like not raped because that's a strong word, but definitely boundaries crossed left, right and center during the sessions. And then we thought, oh, this is not good. This is uh, <laughs> giving the armoring a really bad name. And so we thought, let's then do something about it. And then we didn't really, um, didn't really know one moment, one moment, please. Uh, and then we didn't really know what to, one moment. We didn't really know what to do about it until maybe like six months after that initial conversation, then we say, okay, like, let's start doing trainings. Let's offer something safe and responsible for people to actually step into and start training properly, start designing a system that can actually introduce people to the armoring and create safe and responsible practitioners. So that was the initial thought. And then as we started doing training after training, then we also found out that not only those kind of trainings were good for people to go into the armoring profession, but also people who were already some kind of body worker or masseur or something wanted to go through the grill of the training to improve their skills, to improve their, themselves as a human. So then they actually created the need to uh, start doing retreats as well as the trainings. So that's really how the whole thing started and developed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. I mean, it started in 2014, you said. I mean, 16. I was 2016. 16, yeah. 16, okay, not 14. Yeah. Um, so it started 2016 with um, the, the the trio with you, um, uh, Sana, uh, Beatrice. And Suzanne Rosgard. And Suzanne Rosgard. Yeah. And, um, and that has been kind of evolving and developing over the years. And uh, uh, I mean, I know you since... I and mean, closer since uh, 2020 as well. So we did the first induction together in the Netherlands in 2020. So I was wow. This... It feels like decades ago. But it's it was just on... ages ago. ago. This is yeah. how it feels. Um, but I know Sana since 2010, and so I've kind of seen her as a friend and as a practitioner, as a professional, kind of evolving and developing. And the way how I perceive her now in 2023 or 2024 uh, has have done 16 of these trainings or something like that. So it's like she has made a massive shift in the way how she's showing up public and the way uh, how she has developed as a as a professional mm. and as a guide. It's just like absolutely inspiring, and I see so many people around her really blossoming, blossoming, and just like 
opening up to that and um and kind of working next to you as well and starting to get to know you better and uh get to feel you better the way how you work just like uh there was one of the participants shahib said that very clearly in uh one of the testimonies just like the way how he looks at you he is he is crystal sharp there's no bullshit and that i love that about you the way how you show up there is no there is no kind of chopping around the bush. It's just like, yeah, you just you just come here to get real and be authentic. And but my question to you is, um, how do you show up with this kind of sharpness, with this authenticity? You know, just like you just really cut through the bullshit. Is there sometimes some kind of insecurity about that that you think, oh my god, am I in the right track? Am I doing the right thing? Will they love me? Will they hate me? So how is it going for you when you're in this? Yeah, I mean, when you were sharing about uh, Sana's journey, I also look at over the last seven, eight, nine years, actually a little bit more, but in in the armoring arts, the same thing, like how much I've developed, and and so then this thing about putting my foot in the wrong place, I did a lot of that because I didn't know how to be appropriate in this um, approach. So I had to test it many times and make many mistakes. So it's still like a work in progress. But I guess it's just part of my personality as well. And uh, like when I see Sana, she does similar. She also goes in like a lioness, you know, so it's the style. But um, I think it's being developed and also what I really like about you and your style when you kind of come as a mix into the uh, trio is that I really like your observational capacity to to look from a little bit behind not go straight in the front and like but just give yourself time to observe the whole situation and to feel into what's really going on and then your input comes I, I can really say it is like a more mature than mine so this is what I like about you, what I'm learning from you, is this ability to not go with the first impulse, but sit back on it and maybe even second, third impulse, sit back on those as well. And then come with a seasoned, matured response to what's going on. Mm -hmm. So this is why I think you're also a great addition to the team. And I really love working with, with you and I trust you. Thank you. Because I can see through time and time that it's actually being proven right, you know. So I think when I look all three of us over the last, and also I've known you a little bit through, mostly through uh, uh, Sana's shares, because she's kind of shared about you over the years a lot, you know. Um, the way three of us developed, and I guess, you know, this is the legacy of the armoring as well. So when I look back, even just for this duration that school exists, we can actually see with records, with like actual people shares and 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 uh, testimonials and you know to see that actually even us as teachers are developing a lot through the armoring so it's really it's amazing um we all know it works but now after all these years of working together we can also in each other we can actually see yeah this is a proven and tested method and we are the walking proof because we are shifting as time goes on yeah, so interesting. The first time when we um, worked together, the three of us in induction in Van Wouden in, in the Netherlands, there was just like we had our own kind of de armoring workshop in our trio when we were outside of the workshop space. And just like, yeah, you know, we, you know, if we walk the talk as a professional, we cannot pretend everything is good when we're actually sitting on something <laughs> in, outside of the group. And, and this is what you just said before is um yeah we just like this is work in progress and we develop as we teach it you know yeah. and uh, and we we share that in the training as well when we talk about this what is de armoring and we say well you know there there are some techniques but you know there is no book written what de armoring is and this is this work in progress we develop and evolve while we're doing it and the experience on the go seeing what the package kind of people come with to the training that we have to create you know in the last training 35 people individual um, ways of really helping guiding people into the place where they want to be you know and this for therefore it's just like well you can't come from a book and that's literally as well my approach I mean I have done 
before this the armoring training you know a similar trainings um not that sophisticated but similar about 25 and i've done 25 consent trainings and uh, and this is what i've learned over the years it's just like just wait don't be reactive just really sit and listen and feel and then let it come and you might be right but then having you two guys sitting next to me with your experience is just like somebody said that like the three lions or the three lionesses it's just like we're circling around the ego and the, the, <laughs> the <next mechanisms. laughs> and then, Wait, waiting a moment to kind of pounce on it <laughs> right, waiting for the moment that, that, that just like okay are you ready to evolve and then <sighs> and um and i love this 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 part where people are tremendously grateful for this um, liberation that comes out of that, you know, that the upgrade that 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 people got. But what is for you personally, individually, what is what is your biggest takeaway from working for so many years now with the armoring? What is what is your own process of the armoring? As I say that, you know, we can only guide people as far we've gotten ourselves, and there's always a deepening for ourselves as the armoring practitioner and facilitator. But what is your deepest takeaway uh, from the armoring? I mean, I can see one line developing strongly, which is compassion and softness in dealing with with myself, but also with people with just in my life. So this I can see it's a very, very big, I can see steps that I've done that are unfolding in the arena of not having to be so hard and i'm still direct but it doesn't have to be kind of going with a hammer on a nail it can be and now i have developing the capacity more and more to be put as much as is needed rather than going like bush and mm -hmm. then explode situation unnecessarily too strong so that's one line of development that i can see the other one is really rooting deeper and deeper in the idea that I see the armoring as a lifestyle rather than a technique. Mm. So the more I'm walking that path, the more I was kind of forced to kind of, because I'm continually working with it and walking with it, then by default, it became a lifestyle. And now in a retrospect, looking over these last few years, I can see that actually after accepting the armoring as a lifestyle, it allows and brings masses and like multitude of benefits because it's ongoing. As soon as I notice something in myself, in my life, that it's stagnant or armored, then I need to de-armor it. And so the benefits really are many on my own personal um, skin experience, you know, my own, what I get from it. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you the same back, like what is your... How do you see yourself being the armored uh, through these years of being in the field? Mm. Uh, I mean, the great question is that, as we say that in the training, that so many levels of the armoring, so the emotional, the physical, uh, the rational or the mental, and, and on one part, you know, I just love to say it that way, that um, our armor, our shield, our defense mechanisms, they're all well-equipped self-designed protection shields that we all have developed to survive you know long time back and some of them they are so sophisticated that we even don't know them so we need other people to reflect on them that we can see them and i love the way how sana says that so um it's like a sport you know just <laughs> like when you have licked blood yourself and you know just like okay the stuff that i can't see myself because it's so common and obvious, um, no, it's, it's, not co it's not obvious. It's like it's it's like this blind spot that we can't see, but it's obvious for other people to reflect on that. So that we need other people to reflect where we are, and it is this um, uh, radical honesty to ourselves, kind of saying, "Okay, yeah, I just need to have a look here." I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not clear. And then looking a level deeper and feeling how um, 
how it opens up kind of gives more space on a spiritual developmental structure just like stuff that was not working before all of a sudden is easy and is a flow and seeing that this has a benefit just like to dig deeper and okay what else is there can i have a look at what else how, how can i liberate more but then as well knowing that all this um, unconscious behavior about shields, the armoring, protections, and all that, not to beat ourselves up that we're wrong or, or that we have something or that we are broken or we need to hear that so that we can resource ourselves from that place of A, making that our superpower or making that my superpower in one regard, knowing, yeah, this I've developed that. That's it's an intelligent feature and that I can use that when I need it yeah, without making myself wrong. But when, for example, when it comes to intimacy or proximity or spiritual unity or feeling into connection, having the choice to letting that shield go and take that breath and say, just like, okay, I'm I'm good as it is and I, I, I don't need to protect myself here and kind of finding the freedom. That's probably the biggest aha that I had. And, you know, the physical relaxation that comes with it is just absolutely worth every every tear and every little scarcity that comes up along the way when going through it so that's probably yeah, my physical biggest. physical relaxation i'm almost like not even thinking about it there's like an added bonus that, that of course it's not it's, it's nice to you know have kind of soft shoulders and and like relaxed body it's 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 nice but uh really it's like i stopped this this was my probably the entry point years ago when i first started doing it or at least working on myself a big part of it was that I was so tight. So it was really kind of moving like this, you know? But nowadays I, yeah, it's really like a added bonus that I don't even think about anymore about it. Uh, you know, it's, it's as well so so interesting. Uh, some of, I know if how many are watching, I can't tell. Um, but just like when you have seen the photos from the last, the armoring training. So we, we, we did this kind of, <laughs> <laughs> kind of uh, thing and and you, everybody who did the training know what it means and what i can say about that is that in the in the physical form and in, in in the energetic form of the armoring we're touching differently definitely body parts that people haven't gotten touched before and that comes <laughs> with a kind of package of emotional uh, a garbage of protection and defensiveness and that defensiveness in a safe way can be observed and can be worked walked through and worked through. And this is this is this is as well a big takeaway for me when I went into the armoring again to the sentence you guide you can guide only people as far as you've gotten yourself. When I started the armoring, um, to see how much resistance I had against my own feeling of pain. You know, on a survival mechanism saying just like pain is pain is wrong and I just want to get away and people causing pain, they are uh, invaders. But if it's in a safe way from somebody who knows what they're doing, pain is this doorway into liberation. And that experiencing in body parts that we haven't touched before, for example, you know, when we're doing sexual de-armoring or we're going deeper into the throat and mouth area, the resistance that can be liberated is absolutely fantastic you know in the last training i've seen some people are saying just like what, what i'm not doing that and then they have kind of wrapped their 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 courage and just like and, and went like through this inner battlefield this inner war of experience <laughs> and then they showed up for themselves in total fear and just like okay i don't know if i can do that but i really want to try it and and, and i have learned i can say no and i can direct the person so i'm safe and then then being touched in that place where this trauma is stored and then seeing this liberated free being on the other side coming out, um, experiencing this uh, liberation is just just the observation, seeing that. It's just like I just sit there in awe, close to tears of joy and gratitude, saying just like, well, we have done a great job. This person is, is just like has lost a deep package of their agony and mm. uh, that's you know when you're, when you're talking about this uh this sign and what that means but for for us obviously we laugh because we know what it means and but actually metaphorically i think about uh you know the armoring the armor itself 
became armor because we put it under the carpet. So it's somewhere hidden in a place where you don't want anybody to look at it, touch it or see it. And then this thing here actually signifies this is exactly where we're going. We're going to touch the areas they don't want to be touched at. And then on a physical level, I mean, this goes, as you said, emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, even the armoring. But this thing here, it's kind of signifying the areas physically where normally nobody touches us. Like even, for example, under the armpit, like this is so intimate, like nobody ever touches me there, like ever. I get more touched on my mouth and, and every other part of the body than, than there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like discovering these hidden doorways into our, the most intimate, private experience of life, like lifting all the little rocks and dragging out all the little kind of dirt that is hidden under there, you know? And it's fascinating, as you say, watching people coming on day one the circle sits there and i mean essentially they're all full of shit but they don't know it <laughs> and then but it's true and then on the last day in the circle they all sit there and we all know we're all full of shit but we know it <laughs> it's, it's a much difference you know we are, we are not struggling that much anymore <laughs> no 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 because we allow these rocks to be opened up and like you know so this mm -hmm. is uh this is why I see it as a lifestyle is because as we both understand by now, the armoring really is a journey of mastery, is a journey towards full liberation. And that takes time. I mean, yeah. much, much time. So as if we see it as a lifestyle, then accepting that we're full of shit is a first step. Without it, we can't, it doesn't mean we're going to be rid of it within a year or two. Of course not. It's going to take many, many years. But it's the acceptance of the journey that makes it amazing. And th this is where we start actually having fun with it and start developing deeper and deeper and helping each other and creating groups and circles and friendships and even relationships of people that are actually on the same journey. And this for me is what is actually the biggest heartwarming uh, moment to, to notice when people actually start accepting that way of lifestyle as a lifestyle as something that it's it's a practice it's it's not that something that you do once in a lifetime it's something that you do in many different ways ongoingly because it has amazing benefits yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's 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 so interesting um something is coming up for me while you speak this um uh, that we all carry kind of trauma you know it's just like we we are all born and that's the first trauma that we carry so it's, it's just like nobody is without trauma so but it means as well nobody is kaput or broken or needs to be fixed in a way and 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 kind of finding this you know nugget in ourselves to source ourselves from our capacity to grow and transform different levels of trauma and and i, I remember before the last training there was one of the participants taking the um um, uh, advantage or just uh, the the opportunity to to book a call with me and just ask me, you know, everybody knows I'm a consent geek. And that <laughs> this is what this is kind of my superpower that I bring in, kind of just like uh, how can I create an environment in the field that people feel safe and make the choices about the experience that they want to have, that they're having enough capacity literally to make that choice about being touched in areas that is absolutely a no-go in normal life and then empower them giving them the language and the, the 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 communication by choice to be in their power and this is what this person asked me on that call just like what you know i what is if i don't want to be touched at all or what if, if i don't want to be touched in areas that i don't like and i said just like then you just say no yeah. And, and we teach you exactly how to say no, not only that you can guide people in the training the way how and where you want to be touched, that you learn that as a life skill that you then in life really know how it feels when you have a no in your life, that you then can respond accordingly without going into this old trauma trap and um, behave in a way that is not healthy. 
and just, yeah. just, just really resource yourself from that experience. And this this person observing that person in the training was absolutely fantastic to see when I know the story about that person, what was possible. Like, you know, Peter Levine here, the, 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 the grandfather of somatic experiencing and, and trauma release work said just like, you know, trauma is not a life sentence. And and this is kind of the way how I see us three in there. We just provide that field that people can literally come into that place of, um, yeah, they're resourceful and whole and being real, you know. And and mm. this is what I love about you. There, just um, you are real, you know. This this is just like we, we we're not playing games here. We are not here no. to kind of. Um, letting people go along with any kind of stories or uh, um, pretending anything. So it's like, now, if you want to show up for this truth, you know, we help you 100%. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and, and I love that as well with, with Sana, the way how she shows up for people and how people trust her. And, and I've seen some pictures kind of making the video in the last uh, days. And I see Sana sitting in the middle and the two of us like pillars next to her so that she can really shine in her kind of radiance and in her in her um, superpower of her softness mm. and in her fierceness. And and so so the kind of the the, the team that we are, it's uh, I really special. love uh, it's special. It's I special. really love this the, the, the I think, chemistry that we just provide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we're yeah. so different. <laughs> and you know, also what I can see is that uh because our relationship changes through time. And then I can see that when dynamic between three of us is one, that actually has, like, if you remember the last year's training, also in Sweden, but 2022. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a different experience. Same mm -hmm. teachers, same size group, same place. I mean, the Skepsuden, very, very different experience. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the synergy or dynamic that we create and then it filters into the field. Field feels it and field responds. It's not because there was a special group of people then and it's a different group of people now. Uh -uh. It's us actually vibrating a different level, creating different response from life. And the group is kind of representation of life. So what that showed me after this last one that we did, because it was so magical, I'm really like the only thing that I'm really, really looking closely and working on is creating that synergy between three of us even deeper, even more friendly, even more trusting, even more kind of like this, so that when we actually sit in front of the group, the clearing, the field that we create is the one that inspires people to go all in and just dive into this the lifting the rocks and and plucking the stuff out uh faster bigger bites rather than sheepish and kind of little by little it's also good but i think in 10 days because time is limited 10 days goes quickly so i in in in, in experience i have a proof that i can see that when three of us are in this special I don't know how to call it, like it's magical place of trust between us. It really filters into and helps people uh, do more work, actually. If you like, they get more for their money. If three of us are in unison, it's quite amazing to see it. Yeah, it's, how much it's, we it's, actually, yeah. it's so powerful. I mean, three yeah. of us, we are a quarter of a football team and we can we can. <laughs> stuff, right? But you, you know what I want to say is as well at this point is I mean the three of us we just like holding the core the center and you know everything radiates into the field and creates the field. Um, what I really love is as well the opportunity for participants to come into the training as assistants, so that they hmm. literally get really closer to us and see us kind of doing the magic and doing the art and kind of. Um, uh, supporting other participants from their own perspective of have been a participant. And, you know, the last team that we had, just like to mention a few like uh, Heine or Marco or Gregory or Peter um, uh, or Astrid, uh, who else was there? Well, we were six, 
six assistants um, was just like, you know, that was just one supportive group you know and that just as well so so everybody who has been at the training as a as a participant if you want to get closer and just like get a deeper layer of the armoring the assistance part is absolutely mind-blowing for you as well and then everybody who is coming to the training that they know as well okay on one point when they go through this and they have done their work that they can you know of course they need to be approved in a way but as well assist and go deeper and make that on one point maybe even um a deeper you know work line you know just like mm -hmm. learn how how do you hold space and facilitate a group of 45 people who are dealing with their drama trauma mm -hmm. life struggles and all that and and hold mm -hmm. them together and create that field it's um it's it's, it's a fantastic it's magical experience. I mean, also, like when we're talking about longevity and since 2016, 17, 18, uh, watching our participants then and then coming to assist and who are they today and who they were then, it's wow. This is also, I wish we actually had a recordings of the training so then we can create some kind of a, a timeline through time, how much people change. Even I think stills would also be better than nothing, but we don't have them. But I really do like this. Uh, it, this is like, it gives me more conviction to talk about the armoring because now we can see through time in actuality, like Marco is complete, like he's a different guy when he first came. And now it's like, I mean, totally different guy. And, and Gregor, all of, all of them actually, because the armoring works. So if you walk the path and if you happen to stick around this work, I mean, it has an effect. Mm -hmm. it really, this is like provable, proven time and time again. And I guess so. Th th also one of the biggest benefits for me, because I really love people. I, I love seeing people thrive. Really, th that gives me huge joy, you know. So to see those kind of uh, results and, and changes in people's lives, of course, I'm going to do it again. Of course, I'm going to carry on. Of course, I'm not going to stop because I mean, look at it. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible. You know, it's really that that's what that what magic is. Not just participants come once and ever again, but to see the participants become assistants and then assist first time, second time, third time, fourth time. And the change is like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's incredible. It really is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, just like um, seeing the last training and the training before that we just had at, at Sheps Uden, it's kind of the, the, it's a transformative place in Sweden. Many people know that place, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, uh, and, and it has as well a kind of a rawness as a nature and it's just absolutely, you know, it's a little bit when I would put it in a story, um, most people have seen this Sylvester Stallone, uh, Rocky Balboa thing, you know, where he had lost his championship against the Russian uh, uh, person and then he just went in nature kind of carrying a wooden wheel in the snow kind of <laughs> biting himself through the rawness of the place and this this is the transformative energy of Sheps a little bit and um, but now we have an upgrade <laughs> of that place for the next training that we have a little bit you know we have the championship the, the the next people who are coming into the training they have the upgrade of a really fantastic luxury space in, in investor. Uh, yeah, that's going to be when I first saw the pictures, I was almost like, oh, my God, this is too luxurious. Because <laughs> it really is plush, isn't it? Yeah. Can, can, yeah. Can, can, can we win? Can we win here? <laughs> when we have, are we getting fat cats when we're sitting? They're gonna, we're going to turn out. They're just going to send us away, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah. Come with uh, a shirt and a tie, you know. <laughs> right, well, you know, but this is as well kind of we just as well want to yeah evolve and finding different spaces as well. And I'm really looking forward to having this next training in this place and with the same capacity yeah, of screaming and being loud and doing everything as private and confidential as we have done in in Sheps. I have a specific question for you. Go on then, um, because we are. Um, you know, we, we, we're talking so glorified how awesome everything is and how, you know, but as we know, it's as well a challenge. What's your biggest challenge for you as a, as a facilitator, as a professional doing this work, this training? What's, what's your, what's your, you know, honestly, challenge? it was actually keeping my ego 
aside because doing something once it's easy doing it twice it's easy doing it three times starts getting a little bit more difficult do it more times gets more difficult because ego awakens mm. and so the biggest challenge really for me was not working on myself because this is something I do for many many decades so that's okay but it was actually maintaining check on my ego when it comes to business side of keeping the business together and my relationship with with Sana also at times was very challenging a few years ago we almost split up because it was very challenging mm. so I think for me the biggest challenge was to realize how to put my let's call it small down matuka ego aside and really see the bigger picture of what we're actually doing there what's important and what turned out to be more important than my ego is the work that we do and i'm super happy actually this is like well done there for not falling prey to my i want this and i want that but actually allowing myself to to crumble in my big ego and to actually surrender to the cause the, the what we're actually doing there mm -hmm. because that actually it was this one particular training i think it was uh in uh, in uh, spain at the end of the training in a closing round closing circle people started feedbacking sana and i to how they see us and the importance of us actually doing what we're doing. And that actually broke me. Literally, emotionally, I fell apart. And, and Sana did as well at the same time because it was so demonstrative of like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, what the fuck? Like, do we want to be big ego and, and just destroy this amazing work that we do? Or do we want to actually listen to the people and give them what they need, in which case we need to put our ego aside. So that was a turning moment. I think I can speak for her as well, for both of us, to really say, okay, from now on, like, just stop fighting. It's like, not even fighting, just stop being righteous and me, me, me. And let's think in terms of day, day, day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is the biggest uh, challenge, I think. I, I, I can relate to that, you know, just like as the German mastermind, <laughs> it's not like that I know everything. I know that I know everything, but I want to everybody else know that I know everything. <laughs> and I know that I know it, I know it better. So that's like kind of a big thing for myself. But my biggest challenge is literally, you know, specifically as this consent um, geek and this consent person, kind of, I just carry like an this there's like a code of impeccability i have to be impeccable with what i do oh. and i can't make a mistake and i just have to be super careful and every super conscious about everything and this last training i just make the first since years literally you know since i actually started with Betty, uh, uh, studying with betty martin kind of the way how you know there is a certain way of consent rigidity that i have kind of inherited and learned and the, the 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 fear of making mistakes yeah and the fear of making mistakes has been kind of putting a lid on myself holding my gifts back and my gift is literally you know i'm a body worker since 15 years and i'm so good with my hands and i love that work and so this fear and being afraid in the workshop doing demos for example then um helping in the exchanges people to dig a little bit deeper and doing it from the from from a, from the right intention from the right place and being confronted with my own fear of making a mistake as a facilitator touching somebody yeah and uh, and that was the first time uh, since years i have allowed myself to make that mistake or make mistakes and then recognizing no i actually that wasn't a mistake that was very welcomed and, and and really laughed but the insecurity that i'm carrying as a as a consent teacher consent facilitator um uh, yeah you know there are kind of different subtle nuances to uh, break through over years doing that but that's a that's a big challenge for me kind of uh, showing up with the right intention and having the right vibrations um 
guiding me through that. That's that's one challenge. And the other one is just like, I'm gonna got after a training of 10, 11 days. I'm so exhausted. Oh, really? I'm so exhausted. It's just like giving everything and more that I have and that I can shows me as well that one of my shadows is literally as well, um, you know, the the the, the recovering pleaser dynamic, doing more than <laughs> I actually have, you know, mm. and then recognizing, okay, you know, it's just not getting younger. <laughs> I need to household as well as my energies. And then I have to be aware of how much can I actually really give and making sure that the breaks in between, they are not for questions. They are yeah. for me to do self-care as a as a role model. No, I just you know self-care is an important feature and we all need to do that. Mm. Uh, it's it's interesting. interesting. I thank you for sharing this thing about being insecure as a body worker because this coming from you has a lot of weight. I'm sure everybody starting on the journey I did, uh, massive doubts. Like, am I doing this right? Am I doing, you know, blah, 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 blah. The, 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 the doubting Thomas is like huge. Yeah. So I think hearing it from you that even after 15 years of being a body worker and teaching for God knows how many times years and developing your own system, you still have this uh, insecurity. So I think, thank you for sharing that. It's, it's showing people that it, it just never ends. This is why it's a lifestyle because it's always like next level, next level, next level, next level. It's yeah. like this game has no end literally yeah. like you can master and master and master and finesse 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 it will never stop so this is um yeah good to hear yeah i mean it's an interesting dynamic specifically as a body worker and 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 as a first practitioner or a facilitator as people come to the training and want to learn that um, and and I, I remember this this kind of time of my life where i was so full of myself Kind of saying just like yeah i'm this i'm the super master body worker and clapping my hand and just like look how great i am you know and and i think that's a, that's a pitfall where everybody is going through and today for example when i certify people in kind of certain myth uh, mythologies i ask them so in your work what are you struggling with what is your biggest obstacle and what is what is the biggest thing and people say oh i'm good i have no problems just like okay you're not you're not ready you're not ready <laughs> because you know when you when you open and when you tune in and you feel you can at least literally feel the kind of the person's feeling they're coming with in your in your session and you can at least pick up on that you know and and, and that is normally insecurity that's some levels of fear and um, and we have to have this contact to our own insecurities and to our own fears and to our own um, uncertainties that keep us awake and present and just really feeling into that what's going on here. So let's let's make that transparent. What's happening? I mean, this is like a classic tale of you know you ask a master or I don't know the wisest person something and they say. I know I know nothing. And to get to that point, you actually like first stage is I know everything because I've just done 10 day training and I, I know it all, you know, <laughs> and then, uh, and then you start digging a little bit deeper, scratching a little bit deeper under that surface and, you know, another year, two, three of practice. And then you start thinking, hmm, okay, maybe I don't know it all. And then you do another 10 years of practice and then oh fuck, I know nothing mm -hmm. because really the knowledge is, I mean, the, the depth of that container, it's endless, mm -hmm. you know, between light and dark, there's endless shades of gray. So I think this is also showing maturity that I don't actually know everything because otherwise you say, yeah, you're right. If somebody says, I know it all, then you're not a beginner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, and the beautiful thing is that I see between Sana, you and I, the way how we show up in the field is it's, it's the um, we are keeping each other accountable. You know, we are recklessness with being honest and true to each other. And when there is a fuck up, we do something just like, yeah, you, you just there was a fuck up, you know. And then yeah, it was a fuck up. Okay, so let's clean it up. So it's just like it's not under the carpet. It's just like no, you just if you want to be a role model, then you. You know, you're not perfect. You make mistakes. You learn on the way because nothing is picked in stone. And when you do a fuck up, then you just, okay, I have 
fuck that up. I have to own up to my shit here. And, and, and that I love this honesty from the three of us, how we're keeping each other accountable. Mm. And that makes it kind of really rich in a trio, where, where the way how we facilitate that space. That makes it really rich and it gives it an, kind of an extra an extra dynamic so that this is not like there is no guru sitting there none of them knows more than anybody else and and even we inspire the participants to speaking their truths towards us if something is not in the right place you know and uh and and, and then love the level of honesty and 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 realness and authenticity that is happening there and, and the i think for me this is it. this is really a reason why i do it because without that Honesty is just bullshit. Yeah. I mean, life is a bullshit. It's not worth living. Because I had like until about 35, 36, that's where I started realizing that I'm really full of shit and I need to start cleaning stuff up. Because before then, there wasn't that level of honesty. And it's just living a fake existence. It's like, it's not wrong. It's not right either. But what's the point? What what does that create? What kind of a life? How do I feel? I look in a mirror. How do I feel? Do I feel good or do I feel like shit? Mm. So this level of honesty for me, it's a prerequisite to life. This is why it's a lifestyle, because lifestyle is just be authentic. Just be authentic. It's It's really okay. Nothing is wrong. You can do pretty much anything you want to do as long as you don't hurt other people, but just be authentic, be yourself, because that really is the, the key that makes the difference of looking in a mirror and feeling great and looking in a mirror and thinking you slimy fucking piece of shit. Mm. And that doesn't feel good. It's not even it doesn't feel good because it's not about feeling, but it's not great. Mm. It's just wasting opportunity of life. And so being really so that this is like, in a nutshell, being authentic is maximizing my potential of being alive, of using this whatever years I have on this planet Earth well. Mm. Well, it's not also because there's nothing well about, but you know what I mean? It's like worth living, otherwise it's just a waste. Mm -hmm. So without being that honest, brutally honest with myself, and then obviously with others, it's just the whole life is like a lukewarm soup. It like makes me want to vomit almost. <laughs> it, was it, it, it feels definitely more real. It, you, you know, it's just when, when I see kind of my line of work that I weave into your kind of training kind of part is, you know, we, we do a lot of this consensual part about the waking up the hands and feeling and, you know, how does it feel when you go in action for yourself and how is it when you go in action for others? What do you need to know and blah, 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 all that stuff. But people come along then saying, just like, yeah, I just want to feel more joy. I want to feel more pleasure in my body. And that's just like, yeah, okay, let's start with that. And you will feel more. And then along the line, when stuff is happening and the emotions will coming up, then I say, well, I just thought I just only feel more joy and pleasure. It's just like, no, <laughs> I said, you just feel more. That does not mean you feel always more joy and pleasure. You feel everything. And that's the kind of part in the de-armoring training that is very congruent and looks parallel. Just like, no, no, when you just go down that road, you know, the armoring doesn't mean that, you know, everything is always you know there's a pot of gold on the other side of the rainbow you know it's just it, it, will, it will hurt you just go through some periods of life uh you know all this bullshit that we have conscious uh oh no no successful suppressed for so many years that we have conditioned with you know that stuff needs to come alive it comes up that we can actually be real so you will you will definitely feel more <laughs> It doesn't mean you feel always better. I mean, better. This is like, you know, when people, for people who seek pleasures in life, this is not it. Because, but if you want to feel more alive, then definitely yes. Because just the pleasure is like, a, it comes and goes. Or, or there is like a still polarity, like pleasure, pain. You know, now I feel pleasure and I feel good. And then I don't feel pleasure or I feel bad. So there is no stability, there is no yeah, center line. And what I really like about this lifestyle is 
that every time I'm confronted, I'm losing energy to resisting whatever wants to come. So I'm pushing yeah. against. But when I actually stop resisting it and allow it to come through, I actually feel more alive. I like the, the life force that returns makes me alive. I feel I'm alive. I don't feel I am alive. Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit because that gives me energy to then do my life. And in my case, I go and kite and have lots of fun and somebody else will do whatever. But basically, I have a life, you know, live. And so this is, I think, the biggest benefit. For me, it was in my 30s when I realized this. I call it becoming addicted to break downs or to feeling shit. Because I know that every time I feel like that is because I'm pushing something against. But all I have to do is accept it, work through it. And through working through it, I release the energy they spent up in resisting it. So that actually is life, life force. This is life giving. So once people go through enough, maybe two, one, two, three experiences of that kind of break and breakthrough, break the break and breakthrough, or go from resistance to life, resistance, life. And then I think you hooked. And then life becomes a path of how can I liberate more energy to feel more alive? And then it's good for me, good for everybody else. Yeah, it's it's. It again comes back uh, what what uh, Sana and I have been talking about that just like it just becomes a sport you know it's just like yeah. uh, and and you know if you are a sportsman uh, you just you just you don't trick yourself uh, and and I was just talking here with a friend the other day about that uh, um, specifically in this terms of not resisting what we don't want to feel and this is, comes back to this ideology of consent it's just like now you can give consent um, to feel your fear. You can give yourself permission to feel your uncertainties. You can allow yourself to feel insecure. You can allow yourself to be vulnerable. You can allow yourself to feel everything. And that means everything. And that's, that's, that's where the liberation is. And that in itself is it's, um, it's a, a field of de-armoring. I really love in life. And so this is the, 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 the real life de-armoring. Yeah. But this is it. This is the core. Just feel everything. Yeah. And if you feel everything, by default, you don't put anything under the stone. You don't hide anything. So default, you don't build armor. This is yeah. it. This is the, the formula of life. Like feel everything. Be alive. Yeah. And, but so it's interesting. The... Huh? Uh, no, sorry. Didn't want to no, I was going to say it's like it's interesting how, how, you know, we start life. We go to school. We go through all sorts of conditioning which actually, unfortunately, teaches us to hide. And it's, my head is going this way because it's just, it's not wrong, but it's just, we don't, we're not conscious, and our teachers and parents are definitely not conscious of what that creates for the kids afterwards in life. It creates a fucking nightmare because it installs this system of having to hide, system of, of you know, this is, I, I don't feel safe to show it because something's going to happen bad. Mm -hmm. But actually, all is going to happen is you're going to stay normal. Yeah, yeah. And we don't, we're not taught that. We're not, we don't know the value of being raw, honest, and fucked up. Yeah, I, 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 I like that so much. You know, it's just I, um, a friend of mine has said that you know, in 2014 when I was teaching uh, this kind of style uh in another training and she was saying that you know most people that actually come into the training they're literally children living in adult bodies yeah without being judgmental on that because they are so stuck still in their society parent school education conditioning and this is how i see that now today from this place of coming to this de-armoring training it's it's like you know this is the school of adolescence if you want to say so so we we, we help you to just become this adult version of yeah that suppress as a child on. and and it's it's like we are literally midwives and helping you just like to birth this yeah authentic being that you are and and you get our full support with everything that that you cook up when you when you're authentic you know mm. and um, mm. I, I love it just like yeah the 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 adolescence of um. For being an adult, uh, maturity. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I really see it like, I think 99.9% .9 of people are still kids in some aspects of their life. Independent of their age, you know, when, when they can. Yeah, totally independent of the age, yeah, 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 yeah. And so this is it, like, in a work or work with inner children, working through your childhood things, that's like ABC, that just has to happen. You just have to do it if you want to call yourself an adult. Otherwise, you cannot really. Yeah. You know. But it's nothing wrong with it either. I mean, we are product of our society. We are product of like evolutionary process of this particular society is what it is. And then other societies will have their own uh, shortcomings, if you like. But so there is nothing wrong with it. This is, at least in my book, it's accepted uh, path of evolution of a soul to embody that we get born in a Western society here and we get mummied. I mean, the system is mummying us, the everything is designed to hush, hush, shushi, shushi, mushi, bushi. You poor little thing, you, you, you're not responsible for anything. You have a big papa, big mama, they take care of you. The government takes care of you. You don't need to pushy, shushi, shushi. We, the ch the childish the, responsibility, just like... Totally, uh, totally. I mean, I can see why it's designed that way, because it actually helps people stay powerless. So we are easily manipulated. I can see that. But I can also see that going the other way is a lot more fulfilling. Taking responsibility for myself and actually owning my power, owning the responses that I get from life, become a response able. Yeah. is ultimately millions and millions of times better than than being nanny than and shushed and hushed you know yeah you know it's an interesting dynamic as well what i see sometimes is a little bit disillusionation uh, coming up in me you know for example the last training uh, seeing this is just like everybody has been digging in the best version of themselves as much as they could and wanted. And then, you know, just like there was this container of love and transformation and, and liberation. And then, you know, we have this bubble, 45 people kind of on their, on their edge of, you know, divinity, so to say. And then you just get out of that bubble and you just jump in the bus or in the train and go back to Stockholm or to city. And then you see just like, fuck, this entire world needs that. But yeah. now there are 45 more people who actually yeah. bring that their truth and authentic, authenticity to the world. And what I love about the de uh, arts community is this kind of tribe that we build to support each other. For example, here in Stockholm, there are so many people literally relating, practicing, exchanging, uh, creating their own little tribe of community. Um, and then, of course, there's the online community. But what I would say is the step forward. What is that people, um, or what is, what is coming next? Where does people um, um, find you? Where, 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 where do you get more information? Um, but, you know, before we go step? there, before we go promoting ourselves, which it's okay, you can just find us theamoringarts.com, lovecode.com, you, you'll find it. But I wanted to talk about uh, the armoring as a concept, which is developing in Europe. So All right, some yeah. people are uh, aware of it, most are not, that we had a legal case because a practitioner from Switzerland, she owned the word the armoring, she had a trademark on it. And so she had started hunting all the armoring practitioners in Europe, asking them to stop using the word. So that kind of put a lid on and it was just a whole fiasco. It's, mm -hmm. it's like somebody owns word massage and now nobody can use it. It's ridiculous. So we had to go through legal court system and blah, blah. In the end, we won the battle. And uh, since last October, now the word the armoring is actually free to be used as a term in, by anybody in Europe. And so what I see the next thing, or at least I'm going to work on it, uh, and I'm sure you are too, is to actually make the armoring well known, just promote the whole, not just our school, every school, mm. go to everybody who does the armor because it's effective. It's an amazing way of working with yourself. So I see the next, at least foreseeable future for me is going to be creating material around concept of the armoring. I'm in a conversation right now to uh, create a number of podcasts 
uh, and also episodes like a documentaries episode style half an hour 45 minute long and then interview and do like with you with Suzanne Rosegard with everybody that I know that does the armoring in Europe and basically just spread the word so that all these millions and millions of people in Europe actually get to find out what it is how it works mm. uh, where to go and get it what they can expect what they can't expect what are the limitations what are the safety rules what are the benefits what are the shortcomings what are the other uh, alternative opportunities to it or options to it so this is uh, what I see as the next because first as I said, when we first started the school in 2016, up until that point, the Armoring had quite a bad name. And some years afterwards, still I can hear some people coming, like clients coming up with the negative experiences that I think of still happening, you know, mm -hmm. like crossing boundaries and stuff like that. So, but much, much less than before. And I think now that the Armoring field in Europe is set legally and also there are enough of us. I mean, just through our school, there's 300 odd people they went through and through all, all the other schools and you i think there is now a few thousand people in europe that are offering or working on offering the armoring and i think next thing for the armoring in europe at least is to just go <laughs> educate 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 make it make it available everywhere all this kind of even yeah. maybe a feature like the uh, documentaries uh this is, this, is, yeah. this is wonderful what you say and specifically i want to acknowledge and and give you this uh a gratitude for just like fighting this the armoring fight and just like you know uh, uh um, getting this 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 case clear that you know that you know nobody can own this terminology de armoring you know it's just that uh, and and it's you know, really well done the way how you have fought that through so that you are the kind of on on the forefront of um uh, kind of making that open and free for everybody else who is working with the armoring because it's such a liberating thing that nobody yeah. can really own it's just like as you say nobody can own massage it's just like yeah. ridiculous and the way to, how you describe that it just feels really really nice kind of that there is no competition we don't need that competition in that field you know i mean so, there are hundreds of millions of customers in yeah. europe alone yeah like there is no competition none yeah i mean we need if we had 100 schools training teachers twice a year we would still not even be scratching a surface of yeah. this potential yeah. so i definitely don't feel any competition we're, we're not living long enough that there would be more more practitioner than actually people need the armoring. <laughs> no, I mean, like, really, like, now we kind of established that the armoring is a lifestyle and it's bringing people closer to God, if you like. It's not about like God, whatever concept you want to call it, but it's bringing people open to themselves. It's so, a spiritual path, definitely. Let's, let's even bring it down to just normality. It's just helping people have the most amazing lives they could ever have. Yeah. So if that's the definition and the path of the armoring, then literally every single person that is alive could do with the armoring. Because we all went through the same education system. We all had parents that were full of shit and bless them. They, they, wasn't, they just didn't know better. So how can somebody who's confused prepare someone for life who is not confused? That's not possible. Yeah. So we're all confused about who we are. We all like this goo goo gaga in some aspects of our being. So. I really don't see any competition. I can really empower and, and inspire everybody who is doing the armor. Just go out there and spread it and do it. And as you said, if we were alive for 500 years, each one of us, we would still have like tons of work to do. So it's like, no, competition just doesn't exist. No, no even don't... though it's free then in, in uh, Europe, you know, people have been flying over from US and from Canada and as they know, do <laughs> continents flying in just like, well, I need to do this training. Yeah. And, okay. So, so um, we don't need to talk more about the upcoming trainings and all that. But what I would like to bring into the uh, moment here is there is the next live um, webinar that we're having on Tuesday. The Tuesday at seven o'clock uh, Central European time. Is yeah. it the eighth or the ninth? It's the ninth. The ninth. It's so Tuesday. Tuesday. The ninth at Tuesday. seven o'clock on Zoom. And Central everybody has questions about the training and who we are and what we do and what the training is about and what you learn and how we create the container and everything. 
Um, so the webinar, we want to share a little bit about the webinar. What's your intention and where you want to go with that? That's it. That's it. That, that's it. Basically, just like talk about the armoring, talk about the, the trainings that we have in the upcoming year. Uh, and also just to get your questions and answers straight to find out what it is, what it is and how it can help, how it can't help. Is it for me? Is it not for me? Am I ready for it? Do I need to do something before I come? All those kind of questions are super welcome. Yeah. So we're going to put a link for that uh, webinar at the end of this live in the comments below. So people can actually just uh, register and do it. It's going to be on Zoom. Uh, and other than that, they can find us at thearmoringarts.com. They can find you at uh, what is your website? Somaticconsent.com. Somaticconsent.com. And then uh, for the rest, we're going to be back with more chats and more. And I just want to say, Matt, really, really, really great talking to you. This was really cool. Yeah. So thank you for your time. And, and, and yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, we are just creating this friendship as we, as we teach and learn, right? One thing I just want to add to that, what you said about the webinar, there will be probably people as well from the last training who will share their experience. They are not prompt from us. They are just coming and sharing. We're not paying them, you know. Authentic, <laughs> what actually they have experienced. So if anybody who is listening to that want to hear what people say, not as a written testimonial or not as a video testimonial, just like ask them questions, you know, maybe yeah. challenging questions. That's a great place to start with to see if that's for you. And um, yeah, I love that opportunity. Cool. That's an open invitation to the entire world. Come bring your friend, come yourself, share yes. the word, join, be part of it. Yes, yes. Cool. Um, well, thanks everybody listening and watching to this. And uh, uh, Matt, again, thank you so much for, for being here and co-creating this with me. And uh, I guess we'll see everybody soon at some stage later on. Yeah. So right now we have nine people. I don't know how many we had in the past. There were some people joining, asking some questions. Um, this is what we could come up with today. Um, yeah. I'm really grateful um, sitting here with you and having this conversation. I'm looking forward to talking with you and Sana and with all this amount of people live on Zoom on Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. All yeah. right. Then. All right. Take care. Love you to too. See you. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, everybody. Thank you for your time. Ciao, and ciao. Bye.